And welcome back to the Roundtable Group here on Freedomizer Radio, www.freedomizerradio.com, with your hosts, Sean Gruber, David Hart, and Jim Dunzing. We're going to cover this hour here, developments here in Sin City as it relates to Metro. We have on the phone Kelly from Cop Block, who was recently involved just this weekend in a rally this Saturday that was interrupted by officials from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Kelly, are you there? Are you there? Yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so we were, well, we were out doing um, what's called Second Saturday, which we, uh, we've been doing different actions over the past, really about the past nine months. And then over the last three months, we've, we decided to do it uh, at a certain scheduled day so that people would all know what time it was and everything. So we, we made it second Saturday, and basically we go out to the police station, and it's partly a vigil, it's partly a protest, people do different stuff, we have people do signs, we have people that uh, engage the people as they drive by in the car, give them flyers, give them uh, um, business cards, whatever, you know, with the, uh, the cop lock um, address on it. And so what we do is uh, we go out and we talk about the people that Metro has murdered, which, uh, in, you know, that includes Eric Scott, who they murdered at Costco, and then they called in their uh, called in their favors and had Costco make sure they lost the video of it. And then uh, Stanley Gibson, who I actually went to high school with and who they murdered two years ago, and the cop that murdered him has been on vacation since then. He's been on paid vacation. And... Uh, even though he was completely unarmed, completely innocent, hadn't committed any crime, they uh, refused to prosecute Jesus Aravalo, who's the guy who murdered him, and then Trayvon Cole, who they claim made a furtive gesture, so they murdered him in his bathroom while he was on his knees on the floor. And we even we even do animals. Yeah, but we uh, we do animals and we where they, uh, you know, they killed Bubba the dog. They have another dog they, they ran over intentionally with a car recently. And the thing about Metro is in the history of the Metropolitan Police Department since the 60s, since that, that department was created, and it was actually created as a result of a controversial shooting that was supposed to solve all the issues with them not being accountable for shootings. Yeah. But they have never once charged a cop with shooting an innocent person. Not one time has there ever been a cop put on trial for it. So in 50 years, according to them, there hasn't been one um, unjustified shooting. And that's, I mean, even L.A., as bloodthirsty as they are, they'll actually put cops on trial when it's obviously, you know, a case where they shouldn't have shot somebody. Well, but plus, look at the example. There, there was a guy who... Uh, was shot 14 times dribbling a basketball across Tropicana. There was a guy shot in handcuffs on Fremont Street. Yeah, and there was and they, you know, gone strip with the radio to how they jumped in the convertible and shot him. I mean, and there's right, more and, examples. And, yeah, if you go back right. to Eric Scott, you know, after Mosher shot him the first time, the other two cops unloaded their guns on him while he was laying on the ground to make sure he was dead. Yeah, but that's shooting. And, uh, you know, they shot a monkey. I mean, so if they shoot, they're, they're, when Metro shows up, their first option is to shoot somebody. That's the, yeah, that's, that's a great first point. Option. My, my and, friend, uh, Marshall Steve from Minnesota, makes this point. He's like, uh, and he's from the East Coast. He's like, in other, in other municipalities, if you piss off the cops, you catch a beating. Here, you get shot. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even have to piss off the cops, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, place. You know, that's the whole thing is uh, Jesus Aravalo has been on paid vacation for over 18 months. So not only does Metro not prosecute the cops, they give them an incentive to shoot somebody. You know, they put them on paid vacation. And uh, so, you know, we go out there. Yeah, so we go out there every month and, uh, you know, we like I said, we do the different things. But part of it is shocking. And uh, part of the reason for that is it attracts attention. People see something going on, they wonder what's going on, they come over to look at it. And the other thing is it stays there, and people can see it, you know, a couple of days later. And if you stand there with a sign, you know, it's over in an hour, and then people don't even know you were there, you know. 
So, uh, so that's why we found uh, talking to be really effective for that. So we've made it a big part of our protest. And we go out there and uh, we talk a lot of stuff. Usually I don't even know what I'm going to write before I get there. I just write whatever comes to me. But a big part of it is we, we recognize the victim, you know. And, uh, and we write that out there on there. We write Rip uh, Eric Scott, you know, Rip uh, Sandy Gibson. And, uh, and we ask why Hastings or Wallo is allowed, allowed to murder somebody and just not only get away with it, but then go on vacation and get paid for two years for nothing. If, it, if no. my understanding is correct, you actually got an increase in pay while on vacation. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not personally aware of that, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I know, and, I know and, the guy um, got a medal. Yeah, they gave them an award for being brave, for shooting yeah. the on the ground. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is um, they had two articles come out within, within the past month. I think it was actually within the past two weeks. The guy who shot an uh, unarmed guy that was sitting in a car because he thought his hat looked like a gun, you know, he had a piece of metal on his hat and the glint off it made that guy think he had a gun. Um, they said, they, they recommended that he be fired and they, uh, the article, the headline in the article was, in the unprecedented move, the, uh, the Metro board recommends he be fired, you know. And then shortly after that, they, uh, Gillespie said he was going to put Jesus Arvalo up against in the same board and recommend that they fire him and it was the same headline it was unprecedented that a cop would be fired and it's ridiculous that it's unprecedented for somebody to be fired for murdering somebody yeah meanwhile that you the head of the scene uh he says in the same interview uh didn't do anything wrong even though every single part of yeah. his plan if you believe that nonsense about there being a plan to inject gas into the car every he single part right. of the plan is policy in the law. Well, yeah, and that was the whole thing, and I know you were at the, uh, the police fatality review, whatever the fuck they call it now, that's created to do anything but make sure the details are made to the public, is to hide the details. But that was the whole thing, is once one thing after another was what the cops did wrong and what was against policy, which putting tear gas in an enclosed space like a car is against metro policy. But yet, yeah, I don't think no it's good in that the alternative, yeah. everybody yeah. knows that family's dead. And so, oh, they were just going to get him. I guess that's okay. Well, the other thing, you know, the other thing I noticed during that was when they, when they were talking about the positioning of people, Jesus Arvalo was like, he was too far to the east, so he was, he was in front of the driver window, basically. So he, uh, he was basically in the wrong position, but he was like, where he had a straight shot towards Stanley through the driver window. And then later he moved around to the passenger window. And it was like as if he was looking for a clear shot, basically. And he, he, his ex-wife said that he had told her he was looking to kill somebody so he could have free time. So basically, I think he was actually looking for an, for an opportunity to shoot Stanley and kill him. I kind of, my gut tells me, that not specifically Stanley, but somebody, because the, the kind of guy that tricks out right, his right. AI, uh, is a, his well, right. personality. Is his opportunity. That is, yeah, he wasn't specifically targeting Stanley, but that was the opportunity that he was looking for. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And he got fired. You wonder if he, if he did no, something bad. he didn't get fired yet. Oh, he didn't. Well, okay. yeah, yeah, well, the thing is, he's not even fired yet. They're recommending it. And then if they get, recommend it, it then the, uh, they're going to recommend that he not be The unions announced they're going to vigorously defend him, you know. Oh, well, and I actually well, think the, union, the, union, the, uh, the guy representing him is the former prosecutor. This justice system right. here in this county is so yeah, intense well, that David is going to be defending him. That's one of the other things at the time that Stanley was murdered. Um, Rogers was the uh, DA. And a month later, he resigned to become the official lawyer of the union for the police. So, I mean, what kind of what kind of conflict of interest is that? He's negotiating with the police. There's no way he's going to put them up for charges when he's trying to get a job with them. Great point. Yeah. 
uh, let's say, for instance, they have charged and uh, had decided to terminate him. If he's ready for termination, shouldn't he be ready for prosecution? Not every time, but eight out of ten times. But what are you what are firing him for? Well, that's the other thing. I mean, even if you look at it and you, you give him the, the benefit of the doubt and say, well, this was a horrible accident, if I was working at a meatpacking plant and I accidentally knocked one of my coworkers into the into the shredder and killed him, they wouldn't put me back on the job. You know, I'd be in trouble. I'd be I'd be in jail for negligence and nothing else. Yeah, you're catching a manslaughter. Yeah. Net, yeah, Metro's crazy, man. I, if I was I, if I was just like, well, that guy looked like a cow, so I accidentally <laughs> threw him in there. You know, <laughs> that wouldn't fly. You know, it wouldn't be a good excuse. You know. Remember, like, on charges for something. Years ago, when she killed a bunch of people driving through intersections without their flashing lights on. Yeah, well, that's the other thing is they always talk about because this cop, when we were dealing with him, he was even like, well, a lot of cops die too, and uh, you know that part of the thing is a lot of cops were killing themselves with the way they were driving and running around without their seatbelt on at 90 miles an hour, cutting in front of people, not, not and arresting their, those people and trying to carry them around. Like my and dad he tried to tell me, you know, the here, cops. Now, did. Sorry. Well, then he tried to tell me, you know. Uh, the the highest number of people that died in Afghanistan are cops, and I was like, well, we shouldn't be in Afghanistan in the first place, you know? So he's well, not impressing me with that fact. You know? well, you're definitely right about that, but what, what happened? Uh, how did the, the confrontation today yeah, so, Saturday start? Well, so um, it was kind of, we had like just three of us there because I was doing a bunch of other stuff and I didn't really have time to promote it and it was like 110 degrees, so that's probably had something and to do with it. It's also the Saturday after first Friday, so most people aren't thinking it's the second yeah. Saturday. I think that so, actually got me. So we, that's not, go ahead. Yeah, so we were actually kind of wrapping up. We were just going to do a little bit and then we were pretty much going to leave. And uh, he came driving in. And I didn't really pay much attention to it at first because we've had the cops drive by before. They, you know, they give us ugly looks and stuff, but they don't really do anything. And uh, this guy stopped and came over, and I could hear him talking to Valentine. He was um, saying, "You don't want to shake my hand," you know, because Valentine refuses to shake hands with the police. But uh, so at that point, I could tell he was, you know, basically engaging us, and uh, so. He came over and then he was telling us uh, that we're not allowed to do that, that it's graffiti. And he was trying to tell us that we had to leave right then or he was going to write us up for it. And he, we told him we weren't going to leave, that we had every right to, to chalk and that it, you know, it was a uh, protected speech. And, at the, you know, after a couple minutes of that, then he decided he was going to write us a ticket. He tried to tell us to come over to his car. We said, no, we're not going to your car. And uh, then he went, you know, he came over, and he was trying to tell us that it was, uh, it was illegal to use chalk, which is actually not, and they have a case in Orlando where a federal judge has ruled that it is protected free speech, and it's under the First Amendment rights. And, and so... Uh, I was telling him that, and he was disagreeing, and he's, he's saying, well, I'm a graffiti, uh, I work with a gang unit, and I'm a graffiti uh, specialist or some, some garbage like that. And uh, he Don't went back to his car. And, uh, I, I took a three-hour course. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I forgot to tell him, you know, I forgot to ask him if the gangs are using chalk these days, you know. <laughs> but I, you know, I doubt that they do, but, you know, I haven't been around gangs in a long time, so I don't really know. They might be like, you know, paint might be expensive these days or something. That's but, how uh, you get yourself in, is you, you do a really good chalking job. <laughs> yeah. All the, all yeah, the best so, gangs to do it, uh, the kind of well, gentleman world. JR there. We did have JR there, who's a, an amazing artist, and he does great murals while we're doing our chalking events. But, uh... He went back to his car, and he was there at his car for like 45 minutes. And um, what happened is he couldn't figure out. And we actually, Valentine called the uh, he called 311, which is like the non-emergency phone number for the police, and talked to the dispatcher, 
and she was she actually said to him that she didn't think it was illegal. So I think they said the same thing to him when he called in, and then he's trying to he didn't want to come back and tell us that, you know, because we were being you know we have the video and we're <laughs> there, so we were we were really being like really antagonistic toward him because part of the thing is when they're running around murdering people. I want to ruin his day. I wanted to make it the worst day he's had in a long time. I want him to go yeah. home angry because I want to shame them into actually getting rid of these cops that are murdering people. You know. What I so, can't figure out is why these bastards can't find somebody that actually deserves to get shot. It's not that hard to find. You don't have to look that hard. Why do they have to keep shooting yeah. people that don't deserve it? Yeah. It's but so he um. I, and also before that, I had told him I wanted to be a supervisor, and he was a sergeant, and he said, I'm the supervisor, you know, so he said he wasn't going to call a supervisor. So he went over to his car, and he's sitting over there, and sitting over there, and sitting over there, and, you know, at this time, we're, like, goofing off and laughing and, and you know, having a fun time, actually. And uh, when he finally came back, he, he started saying something about somebody in a red or gray shirt or something, which none of us had, so I don't know if he's like colorblind or something, but um, none of us had a shirt that matched that, so we couldn't figure out who he was actually trying to talk to, but apparently he was trying to talk to me, and he was saying, you know, well, I finally, I did actually call my supervisor, so you guys get to speak to him, and uh, at that point, another guy had shown up, who I assumed at the time was his supervisor, but I guess it was just another sergeant or whatever, another officer. But so then he went back to the car again, and he's, you know, back on the phone. And he came around, and he's giving us tickets, and he's telling us, you know, we're not allowed to draw graffiti. And I kept correcting him and telling him that we were actually drawing the chalk, and it's not considered graffiti. And I made yeah, him yeah. actually say, well, I made him actually say what he was citing us for. I made him actually say that we were drawing the chalk, because I wanted that on record in case they you know, we went down there and the charges were graffiti and, you know, they just disregarded the fact that it was chalk. I wanted to actually on record so that we could show them that we weren't doing anything illegal. What statute did he cite? Um, it was like 240-something. I'm not sure the exact one, but... Okay. Yeah. Oh, actually, hold on one second. I got the ticket here, so I can read it. I can read it. Can read it. Can read it. Okay, so it's 10. Yeah, 10.44.100. And, uh, and we actually did, um, we did a chalking before at the uh, Regional Injustice Center. And we got detained then and a bunch of cops showed up. And they, they specifically told us that we could, we could draw on the sidewalk, but we weren't allowed to draw on the building. Because we had drawn all over the whole steps and actually on the side of the building and everything. And at that time, they, they actually told us it was legal to do on the sidewalk, but that we couldn't do it on the building. So, okay, um, and all the Saturday was on the sidewalk. Okay, what's that? All the chalk on Saturday was on the sidewalk. This time, yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything was on the sidewalk. And so they gave you tickets, and I don't, I don't see that uh, that statue you you cited. It doesn't sound like an NRS. I'm not sure what exactly it is, yeah, but uh, I might have read it wrong. They gave you a, a ticket for writing ch with chalk on the sidewalk. I guess they're calling it graffiti, yeah. knowing it won't yeah, well, end up with two hours out that's there. That's what so. the supposed charge is, graffiti. And then, like I said, we, when you see the video, it's actually really funny because we were really making fun of the guy, and, and this guy was having, like, the worst day. And, uh, like, when he gave me his ticket, it said chalk, but it said C-H-A-C-K. And I was like, really, that's how you spell? And I asked him, like, don't you have to graduate high school to be a cop, you know? And, Just barely. And, uh, and, you should, you and then he was, chalk, wrote chalk on the sidewalk. Yeah, and then he, uh, 
Well, he kept saying, like, that's what the courts are for when we were telling him he was wrong. And I was like, no, the courts aren't just – you can write up anything you want as a, as a um, you know, as a legal, you know. But the courts aren't designed for you just to write shit down, whatever you want, you know, and, and try to pass it off. Well, as well, there's theoretically at least for harassment of that kind. Yeah. And uh, then he was like, well, it's not my job to decide that. And I was like, no, you're a cop. It's your, it's your job to know the law, especially when you're trying to cite somebody for it. And I actually say, I say, like, you know, if you work at Get Clean, you know how to make an ice cream cone, they'd fire you. You know, they wouldn't be like, well, that's what customer service is for, you know. <laughs> but so eventually the lieutenant did show up, his, his supervisor. And so what the lieutenant told us is, they called a DA, and then they called a judge. So the 45 minutes they were sitting in the car, they were sitting trying to figure out some way to give us a ticket and not have to lose face by telling us that we were right with what was actually happening. To, to avoid a malicious prosecution charge and still give you something. Uh, yeah, well, and he didn't want to look. What's planned in response now? I know you, you guys are almost done editing up a video. What else you got going on? Yeah, well... We actually have a lawyer that says that he'll he'll defend us free. So we'll be fighting the tickets, and uh, we do have the video almost done. So it'll probably be up like tonight, actually, probably. Okay. And where can yeah, you so go tomorrow to watch that video? Yeah, the URL. Okay, he well, says that uh, he, he emailed you a link on Facebook. Uh, but you have a – your website is like coplock.com slash Nevada or something? Well, it's nvcoplock.org. There you go, nvcoplock.org, and you'll have – you'll probably have a link up on that page tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, sometime tonight or so it'll yeah. get posted. Tomorrow, check on it, and you'll be able to see the video – We'll cover it here on Thursday. And Kelly, anytime you want to come on the show, you're welcome. Uh, call on in. Anything else you want to add? Uh, maybe talk about the next second Saturday uh, in July. Yeah, we'll definitely be out there. Um, I'm not sure what day it's on, but it's the second Saturday. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we set it up so that it would be, you know, uh, easy to remember day. Um, and... We have uh, we have nvcoplock.org, which will post the information for that. We also have a meetup group. Um, if you go on our Facebook page, you can find links to all that. Um, we have a website with sunsetactivistcollective.org, which the three of us all also belong to the Sunset Activist Collective, and uh, we have the old uh, occupylv.org which usually announces all our stuff also. And uh, I'm actually, I'll be pushing, well, I'll be pushing this on to the actual national um, Coplock site. So uh, coplock.org, I'm not sure what their turnaround time is on posting stuff, but within the next few days or a week, it'll probably be on there. Uh, but tomorrow go to nevadacoplock.org and you'll be able to see the whole video uh, or I'm sure if you check my Facebook, you'll see it. Uh, thanks yeah. again, Kelly, for calling in. Hey, Kelly, one more thing. You heard anything about what happened to that uh, one of those founders from Cop Lock, the national organization that got shot three times for open carrying out in Missouri? Jeffrey Winehouse? Yeah, how's he doing? Um, here? I haven't heard anything recently as far as, like, his condition. I know he, uh, the last I heard was um, he said that he had cameras in his car and that mysteriously disappeared. But uh well, they got that audio of the I, I believe I believe he's gonna recover and everything. But they did I mean they shot him, they tried to kill him, you know. Yeah. And and basically what they did with him is they supposedly set up a meeting to talk to him, or at least that's what they told him. And instead it was basically like to arrest him. It's not yeah, so he showed up, up. Yeah, well, he tried to say that he tried to pull his gun, and then they shot him, basically. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, and, uh, they get married all the time, and they knew they could get away with saying that. Well, I also heard that the uh, highway patrol out there has dash cams, so I don't know what happened to that video, you know. Well, but like, like I said, there is, there is audio. I don't know where the audio came from, but there's audio of the shooting where you can you can hear what's going on. And they don't ever say, drop your gun, put your gun down, don't reach for your gun, none of that. Uh, yeah, and they usually say that even if you're not reaching for a gun, just like so the bystanders will hear it, you know. Exactly. exactly. Great point. Yeah. So I, yeah, I didn't hear that audio. Tell me just that. But, yeah, good good point of advice is never meet the cops out in the middle of like a deserted parking lot. Yeah, especially if you're over yourself. there and they're killing you. Right. Yeah, that's not a good idea. So if the cops ever invite you to meet them in a in an open parking lot for no reason or well they had a reason, but if they ever invite you to meet them by yourself in a open parking lot, don't do it. <laughs> yep. All right, thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Kelly. And uh, right. once the video is up and uh, some more details, feel free to call in Thursday or next Sunday. Or, like I said, whenever you want to call in, you're welcome to call in. Thanks yeah. again for All coming right. on and for everything you do in this fight, Kelly. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jim. You got it. <laughs> We're going to take a break here and come back here on the roundtable group.